Hi, Karen. Happy, happy uh, July 8th. Yes. Happy July 8th. Happy week of your actual birthday, which is July 12th. Everyone text Karen immediately on July 12th. Happy birthday yeah. week. Thank you very much, Slash. Birthday uh, by any, no, whatever. However I'm doing this whole two-year thing. Thank you very much. Yes. This is my last episode at 48. Thank you. It's wonderful to see you as always. It is wonderful to see you, Karen, and 48 and fucking fabulous. And I love that you're entering this two-year stint. Listeners, if you don't know what we're talking about last week, Karen, you said that you wanted to enter your, like, you're going to have like basically a two-year celebration for turning 50, essentially. Yes, correct. yes like last year of the 40s, first year of the 50s. Yeah, yes. two full years. Yep. Right, which is what everyone should do when they turn 50. I mean, why not? Gosh, and or just hide from it. I just, you know, this is how I feel right now. Talk to me next week and I'll be like, oh, yeah, no, 50. We're going to skip that. <laughs> we're just gonna... You know what's so amazing? And maybe it's because like we're at, at like getting closer to 50 is... I think when I was a kid, I honestly thought 50 was like pretty, pretty old. Like, and I mean, now I'm like 50 is nothing. It's basically this equivalent. I mean, I'm actually being serious of like 25 to me, maybe 29 to me. I genuinely do not think it's old at all. I really don't. I don't think it's old at all. I mean, obviously I'm staring down the barrel of it. I don't think it's old at all. And I like wonder how much of it. I feel like in part it was informed by pop culture. Like how old were the Golden Girls? Like for real? Like, yeah. And that like when you're growing up, you're a kid of the like 70s, 80s. Like your grandparents probably were in their 50s. Totally. I mean, completely. Yeah. So like grandparents seem old to you. So there you go. Yeah, it's so true. Also, all of my teachers always seemed old to me. I think I might have talked about this on the pod, but I always wonder, like, I always just, I don't wonder. I actually just assume that all of my teachers are actually dead now. And so, which I I seriously do. Like, and my mom is a retired teacher. And so, like, she'll know some of the people that I used to, like, you know, have as teachers. And uh, I will mention someone's name and I'm like, oh, you know, like, da, da, da. And then I would be like, they probably died. And she's like, what she's like they're 61 i'm like what (laughs) i'm like wait if they're 61 that means that they were like in their 20s when they 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 like well maybe not 20s but like you know what i mean like it's just it's so skewed when you're a kid you really think that everything is so much it's like outsized in your mind a thousand percent like i oh my gosh being back in homewood bringing all these things back but like my fifth grade teacher so fifth grade is the year that we moved, we moved to this small town outside of Chicago. Yeah. And my teacher that was her first year teaching, we were her first ever class. And I think she was like 22, 23, 24. And I actually have a classmate who has kept in touch with her. Wow. Like friends. Yes. They're friends on Facebook. And so she was showing me like pictures of this woman. And I just was like, it, yeah, it was like so, it was so surreal. It's exactly like you're describing, like, oh my God, Miss Kimmel must be a million years old. No, no, no. Miss Kimmel's like 52. <laughs> she was like, it's so weird to think about because the age difference between us and them is actually so small. I'm like, wait, I have yeah. friends in their 60s. Like, I have like, like good friends, you know? Like, it's just, oh my God. It's yeah. bizarre. It is. It's bizarre. Yeah. That's so funny, though, that like, Miss Kimmel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not a I million. Think her no, she's not a million <laughs> out here thriving. Yes. So weird. It's so weird. Oh my gosh. Okay. So birthdays. Yeah. I also, I will say, Karen, I absolutely love that you embrace your birthday in such a beautiful way. I really do. Like, I, I think it's just so positive and like, I'm not trying to, you know, say anything disparaging about anyone who's listening, who like hates their birthday. I have met people though, who like, are like traumatized by their birthdays. Like some people, like they don't want to celebrate it, but they also don't want to talk about it. But they also like, they can't stand to think about themselves getting older. And like, I'm very similar to you, Karen. I just embrace the shit out of it. I always celebrate my birthday. I always have some sort of party or something. We do the same thing for Tyler. Like, but then I also find that like most of my friends, I'm like, wait, is there a birthday? Like actually this happened yesterday. I was on a Zoom call with some friend, good friends. And I was on a Zoom call and, and one of them like, some stuff was happening in all of our lives that we just kind of like got 
you know, dark and deep very fast. But then um, at the very end, she's like, hey, guys, it's my birthday. And we're all like, oh, shit, I'm so sorry. And she's like, I just didn't want to make it weird when we texted later. And then you guys remembered. And I just wanted to put it out there. And it was actually really funny that she just said it like that because we were like, we're so sorry. But like, it was just so no big deal. Like, it's like, you know, to her. And it was like, to me, I'm like, oh, I just... I mean, maybe it is a big deal to her and I don't mean to be negative whatsoever, but I just think, you know, yeah, celebrate. Right. Well, and you just, it's like, um, it's like being a hugger, not a hugger. Like you don't want to project your own birthday excitedness on somebody who's just like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> totally. Oh my God, it's your birthday. Like you go over the top and you get them balloons and you get all the things and they're just like, I actually hate this more than anything. Yes, exactly. And I'm like, oh. Hey, I'm like just kidding I'm gonna put those balloons back like it's like what mm. also can we talk about hugging for a second because Tyler and I had a whole conversation about this and I feel like everything has changed since COVID both Tyler mm. and I have always been public huggers as in like totally. I mean I guess that's I don't mean like hugging each other like yeah okay fine we'll hug each other in public but I mean like when we meet someone when we talk see friends like whatever it is and I think it's so hard for for everyone honestly because like I have found that I have been so sensitive to people's body language since COVID that I, I don't want to make anyone uncomfortable I if you're not a hugger which I know some people in my circle are not huggers I don't want to go in for the hug but then I'm realizing that like I think some people think I'm not the hugger because I don't always go in for the hug because I assume that they're not going to go in for the hug so then I feel like a cold bitch when actually I would be happy to fucking hug them this is exhausting I completely agree. And I also live in fear of being interpreted as the non-hugger because I am the ultimate hugger. Like, yes, of course, I want to hug you. And I've also gone in for the hug with a non-hugger and it's so awkward and horrible. And I don't want to be perceived as the person who's just like, Ugh. Yes. But not that there's anything wrong with that. Oh, it's weird. It's so weird. It's so yeah. weird. I mean, how do you deal with that, Karen? Like, I don't like, do you just, it's just awkward every time. <laughs> it's just <laughs> How do I deal with it? Yes. It's awkward every time. Right. Yeah. I mean, like Tyler and I were having this conversation like the other day and he was like, oh, he's like, but at least, you know, you don't have to deal with the, how did he say it? There was a word and I can't remember what the word is, but you know how every once in a while, got, oh, he said bro hug. That's what he said, <laughs> which it's like when the guys go in and they kind of like clutch each other's hands, but then they like bring chest to chest and then their like other hand is like beating the back of Ugh. the other guy's back like Tyler hates that but it's like he there's nothing he can do about it like he actually just wants to hug people for real hug normal hug and like but then like a lot of guys who are just like you know like really like married to toxic toxic masculinity or whatever <laughs> they don't know what the fuck to do they do the like the half hug but you're actually closer to them because you're like clutching each other do you know what I'm saying like it's I know exactly what you're describing yeah i <laughs> also when you go in for a hug fucking hug like don't give me the little like pat on the back because then i'm the one enthusiastically hugging you and you are limp noodle who's just like kind of touching me like that's oh my the gosh, worst Katie, you and i are the same person and i it just it would be better to just be like i don't i <sighs> yeah I don't handle the like loose noodle, the like, uh, I don't really want to do this. So I'm just going to like. Totally. Yeah. Totally. It just kind of makes it gross. And then there's the side hug, which is also like, I'm not as bad with the side hug. I'm like, okay, if you're really just going to like turn your body and not want to hug me, like, cool. That's, I don't know. That doesn't bother me quite as much, but like, it, cause it like puts up a boundary sort of, it's better than the loose noodle hug. Don't give me a fucking loose noodle. I feel like I. <laughs> I have a, um, there's a, the director of a program that I'm in that is a year long and we see each other like four times, four or five times over the year. And of course, everybody wants to hug him. He's the founder of it. We all just love him. Right. Of course. And, you know, post COVID, right. He, he is very good about doing the elbow and he lets us know. And it's so funny because the last time I saw him, everybody was hugging him and he's just like, I've just given into it this time. Oh. <laughs> just, but like, I feel like the like elbow bump, I just, I feel like he's very graceful about the like, uh, no, I'm happy to see you too, right? Like that takes an enormous amount of confidence 
to like to basically like take out your elbow sword and be like no this is what I do now like it's like you know like it's just it's like back up one step and just stick out your elbow people are like just kidding putting my arms down no problem <laughs> I think that's amazing honestly I actually have a lot of respect for it I think it's great I really I praise like such a sweet man that it's just like oh right okay that's amazing yeah. but yeah this last time I was like I hugged him and I was like oh my god that's right I'm sorry you don't hug and he's like it's it's all right. Yeah. It's okay. I deal with it. What do I do in the world? So true. Okay. So I know we only have four minutes and 20 seconds because listeners, if you're not hilarious. looking at YouTube, yes, we're doing a mini pod and it's a very exciting topic that Karen, we both we kind of like dreamt up together, but you definitely were the impetus for. So thank you for that. It's basically the idea of like, okay, we're halfway through the year. What do we want our what did you say second half to look like yeah to use the second half metaphor. yes exactly like we've heard they've had the first half shit hasn't necessarily gone our way we've yep. gone to the locker room we've regrouped and we're back for the second half and all right what are we bringing what are we bringing like fumes <laughs> like i don't know <laughs> coal simmering coal i'm kidding um <laughs> like what are we bringing Right. I, I would love to think like, you know, again, go sports. Like I, I love a good, like comeback story, right? Like, yes, I could not tell you what sports these were that I, maybe it was a fever game in Indiana. I don't, but like, right. They're like, they suck. It's bad. You almost want to leave and they come back and they win. Right. Or they tie the game and they almost win right so yes. i i would love that for us for 2024 to like come back in the second half and just be like killing it yes i don't know that i'm feeling like that right now <laughs> three days in but yeah i mean it's it's totally possible and those comeback game like the like what you said like it totally reminds me of like did you ever watch the mighty ducks as a kid <laughs> horrible i mean i'm not saying that it's like the best movie ever but it's like that they were like shit and then they like come back and they win the title w with emilio estevez as their coach and like i don't know if he's been canceled i don't know i apologize if he has but like anyway the point is is that like i love that i love the comeback like no one no one always roots for the people who are always winning it's like the people who pick up themselves by their bootstraps and they move it on like keep it moving Yes, that is what that is the energy I would like to bring into at least November when November, of course, is when democracy finally does die officially. But like, um, Ooh. yeah, between now and then it should be great. <laughs> should be great. Also, listeners, keep uh, keep like looking at our you know list of podcasts because Dr. Tanya Israel is coming back Jeez. and hopefully going to ease some of our high blood pressure around this election cycle because she is coming out with a really exciting new book. I hope it's okay that I'm saying that. And so she, you know, will grace our stage in the next few weeks. That sounded weird, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like that was, anyway. anyway Dr. Okay. Tanya, we love you. Yes, we love you. Um, okay, so I think what I'm bringing into the next season is as much calm as I possibly can. Like, mm. just like calm, but also... I don't know, like, this is from therapy the other day, but, like, doing the shit that I want to do, like, and being calm about it and being kind of unapologetic about it. Like, for example, tonight there is a birthday situation that I was invited to. Nice people. Really nice people. Okay, fine. I'll just tell you. It's, oh, God, I really hope they don't listen to this podcast, but, like, <laughs> it's at an escape room, and, like, I actually really love these people. I've never been to an escape room. I'm not good at riddles. I have a lot of like social anxiety about it. Shame that I just can't figure that shit out. It like brings me back to like algebra in 1995. And I um, wasn't that excited. I was still excited to see these people, but not super excited about this place. And so it just so happens that one of our dogs has separation anxiety. So, oh, darling, not going. But here's the thing. If I wasn't hiding behind my dog's separation anxiety, if I was being honest with myself, I would just say no. And so I'm. Mm. that is actually the energy I'm bringing in of like just really being in touch with myself and just being like, okay, this it doesn't matter if I'm disappointing people. I'm going to either say yes or no to the things that actually resonate with me. 
Oh Oh, goodness. Hello timer. Our timer's up. I, I love that for you. I love that energy. And like we've talked about, it's not self betrayal. You're like listening to yourself, being true to yourself. And you know, I feel like we don't think enough about like alternatives. Like you're not going to do the escape room. Like, can I take you out for a drink? Can we go out for tea? Can we go for totally. a walk? Can we go right? Like it, there are a million different ways to celebrate somebody's birthday. You're so right. You're so right. And I think by texting these women, I was like, Hey, not in for this, but why don't we go out in a couple of weeks for dinner? And so we're going to do a girl's night. That's great. Aww. The end. And so it's like, perfect. And that's actually something I really do want to do. So like yes. winning, but I'm, I think I'm just going to, I have a really hard time with that though, because like, I think the people pleasing, the codependency, all of that, I try to problem solve for other people before I actually ask myself what I really want. And so I just don't ask them what they actually want. And instead I just do it. I, I just leapfrog through everything and then just end up crashing on the other side. Oof, that is real. I don't know that if that makes sense, real. but yeah. <laughs> it did make sense. Ooh, I love that. Mm. Yeah. So what about you, Karen? Are you <laughs> keeping Ooh, it moving? Second half, keeping it moving. I really am focusing on this idea. I know I've talked about this of you know, the voices in our head catastrophize everything, Mm -hmm. right? Like, what if this happens? What if this happens? And it just like paints this dark, terrible picture of what can happen. And I keep trying to flip it. Like, what if a great thing happens? What if that goes awesome? What if that's a giant relief? What if that's great? Yes. And it really has been very eye-opening about how much of, yes, my like, you know, anxiety is like about the future, right? And how much of it is steeped in just thinking the worst and that you don't have to think the worst. You can think like, or it'll be great. And if it's not great, I'm going to deal with it. Yes, yes, yes. I love this so much for you. And I love this for every human out there. It's so true. It's like we, I think it's just like natural to catastrophize things. Like that's just a natural human experience. And it's like, to just flip it on its head like that's yeah like that's amazing oh my god I love that for you I love like it reminds me of lately if I'm feeling really shitty like really really shitty I will look in the I can't believe I'm actually saying this out loud but like it's just whatever who cares I will look in the mirror and I will smile at myself genuinely like really smile at myself and I will smile for like a few seconds and it actually lightens my mood And it's like, instead of being anxious about a situation or like, you know, like, okay, I have to just power through and like, fuck, today's going to suck. And like, whatever it is, I just like take a minute. It takes seriously five seconds and it actually does change my brain chemistry. Isn't that wild? It's exactly what you're talking about though. Like in terms of like just turning something on its head, like today can be shit. Fuck. It's shitty. And now maybe I can smile and make it a little bit better. Yes. Sometimes that's just what you need. A little dopamine boost. It's so funny you say that. I was driving a couple of days ago and Savage, it's a Megan Thee Stallion song with oh, Beyonce, the Beyonce version. Song. Yes. And Beyonce has a part, I think, where she says, look in the mirror and be like, bitch, you're my boo. Yeah. And yes. I, have, I have a coworker who always advises us, be your own boo. Oh, I love that. I just, I'm like, yes. Yeah. Be your own boo. Be your own best friend. Oh. Yeah. So it's like that. that. Yeah. Like if your best friend was having a bad day, if your boo is having a bad day, you smile and you give them a hug. And I feel like that's what you're doing to yourself in the mirror. Like, girl, it's going to be all right. Totally. It like gives you so much love versus like, okay, I'm just going to power through it. And somehow that's going to make me feel better. That's never worked for anyone ever. Like, it's like, it's like, no, actually like compassion, self-love, even if it's just like taking a breath. Yeah. A little positivity, like, you know what? This sucks. It's going to be right. Yes. <laughs> this sucks, but it's going to be right. Yes, exactly. Exactly. It's going to be all right. All right. Well, this is amazing. And I am very hopeful and inspired by our intentions for for a second half. And I hope everyone oh. else has some intentions that they're thinking about for theirs as well. Also, text us. Also, going back to last week, we didn't get any texts about um, plain sex. So no. please hit us up. 
if you not know a anyone, one. not a single plain sex text. Come on, people. Yeah, we're l- relying on you. Please <laughs> throw us a bone. All right, we'll see everybody next week. <laughs>